Meekly McGraw is one of the outlaw boss bad guys of Oddworld Stranger's Wrath who's encountered during the strangest time in the town of Buzzerton. Being the same species of outlaw as your standard outlaw shooter minion, it's no surprise to hear that Meagly is the smallest member of his family and was picked on a lot due to this. I suspect it's likely that this is also where he gets his nickname from, Meagly as in like meaning something that's small. Meagly McGraw is similar looking to Filthy Hands Floyd, especially in terms of they both have dark brown variants of the outlaw shooter minion outfits. Meagly has a feather adorned top hat wrapped with ammunition belts with a big symbol on the front of the skull of a beaver thing. Probably a clacker, but it doesn't really look like one to me. Maybe a grub, though it looks like it's got two fangs on the side of it, so maybe it's a skull of his own species. McGraw also has a tattoo on his left bicep. Due to his small stature, when in potential danger, Meagly is always accompanied by his massive bodyguard, the ironically named Tiny. Tiny is McGraw's right knuckle dusted hand man and acts as protection and transports for him. Meagly is able to ride on Tiny's back on a, I don't know what you'd call it, a saddle maybe, due to Tiny's massive stature and immense strength. He seems to be the same species as the typical outlaw Nailer minion, but reportedly has strength vastly greater than four Nailers put together. He also utilises slightly different weaponry, wielding knuckle dusters more akin to what the outlaw cleavers use, but with a vast array of long bloody spikes, as opposed to the standard nailer's shorter, stocky spiked adorned metal gloves. Perhaps shown how much stronger he is, Tiny doesn't wear as many protective metal plates as nailers normally do, although interestingly, he does wear a different kind of mask, a one-piece metal mask with holes by the mouth in some kind of grin shape. Kind of looks like some kind of metal hockey mask, perhaps an attempt to add a creepy or psychotic vibe to Tiny. There's also, of course, holes for his eyes, which in rendered art are shown to be glowing orange, yet in the game itself appear to simply resemble that of the standard nailer. Contrast Tiny's mask with the bulkier and heavier looking jaw piece and helmet style of the Nailer's mask and the differences between the two and it really shows that Tiny isn't simply another Nailer and is very unique in his own regard. It's also interesting to note that in all of the rendered art of Tiny he is shown to have bare fists as opposed to carrying his knuckle dusters. So maybe originally he was just that strong that he didn't even need weapons like that. One thing I do find interesting though is that in one of the most famous promotional images of Stranger's Wrath, an outlaw is shown but I don't think is actually seen in the game, which appears to be a nailer who's using the same spiked knuckle dusters as Tiny does, while also wearing, aside from the addition of a top hat and a lack of Meagly's saddle, what looks to me to be the same outfit as Tiny. Note the sleeveless vest for example, so it makes me wonder if this was an early image or concept for him, maybe a pre-McGraw Tiny. Tiny's intelligence is very low, which is probably expected considering a massive muscular guy like Tiny serves a small coward of an outlaw like Meagly McGraw, who treats Tiny as more of an animal as shown by the fact McGraw seems to use an elastic binding of some kind on Tiny's cattle-like horns in order to guide him to where he wants to go. I suspect it's also likely that Meagly is the person that gave Tiny that rather degrading and inaccurate nickname, probably to make himself feel better about his own small size. Tiny has even developed an immensely hunched back even compared to the typical Nailer, due to the massive platform McGraw uses to ride on top of him, which also has a massive gun perched onto it, allowing Meagly to fire sprays of bullets at targets, from the safety of being protected by this great massive hulk. It's as a result of this situation that puts Tiny in the very unique position in the game of being an outlaw minion that is treated as a boss fight, including with his own health bar. Furthermore, he consequently ends up being the only outlaw in the entire game other than the sewer-dwelling Scuzz, who's not really an enemy, arguably, who cannot be captured by Stranger, alive or dead, and is simply killed outright by him, exploding for some reason as soon as his life bar is fully depleted. As a result of being made fun of due to his size, Meagly McGraw sets out to make a name for himself in the outlaw world, 
by gathering up forces and creating a large gang to begin his operations. The thing about Meagly is that he absolutely loves opals, Oddwell's equivalent of apples. He eats and drinks anything made out of them, he considers himself a connoisseur of them, an expert on the fruits. However, he absolutely despises the ones who make all these products, the clackers. And from what I gather, he would love to exterminate their entire race. As a result, he concludes that the most ideal action he could commence is to invade and occupy Farmer Beak's Opal Farm. That way, he gets to control a business built on his favourite fruits and slaughter a bunch of clackers while he's at it. A great day! It's this that shows his rather sadistic nature as he lays siege on the property, murders Beaks the Opal Farmer and wipes out all the clacker workers on the farm. Apparently even roasting some of them on a spit over a fire, ready to make some Kentucky Fried Clacker. Or Buzzerton Roast Clacker, I guess. I find it interesting that Meagly chooses this as his illegal plan. Seems like a somewhat reckless plan to me, or a roughly performed operation when compared to some of the other outlaw operations that I've been reading about. Meagly seems to do stuff mainly out of pleasure as opposed to money. He takes over a farm simply because it produces his favourite food. He kills all the workers on it out of pure hatred instead of getting them to work for him, so presumably his gang are the ones that now need to do all the work. So it's no wonder that apparently he's not very respected by some of his outlaw minions. He just doesn't seem like the most intelligent of the outlaw bosses in my opinion, or at least the most efficient or pragmatic. But then again, I sort of understand it. He uses the farm for trade and as a base of operations for his schemes. And I guess if you're going to set up a headquarters somewhere, why not make it someplace you're going to enjoy? Unfortunately for Meagly, his reign over Farmer Beak's lands doesn't last for long, as he happens to have occupied the property at the same time the stranger is in nearby Buzzerton. Stranger hears about this and heads on over to bring Meagly McGraw to the Buzzerton jail, dead or alive. After Bag and McGraw will free those farmers' daughters. <laughs> Before facing Meagly, Stranger must defeat all of his guards and minions he has operating on the land before the man himself comes out to fight when left with no other option. Now that you've drawn Meagly McGraw, with Tiny of course, out of the woodwork, it's time to take them on. Personally, I always remember this boss fight as being quite tough for some reason, and I remember spending quite a bit of time on this area as a whole when I played it years ago, trying to take out his guards very sneakily at first, though presumably failing as I usually do. According to the Odd World Wiki, here's how you should beat Meagly McGraw. This boss fight is unique from the others one may face in Stranger's Wrath, because there are two bosses within this battle. One of them being Meagly McGraw, and the other being his trusted bodyguard Tiny, being McGraw's ride. Now Tiny cannot be captured alive, and can only be killed by Stranger. In this case, it is safe to go nuts against Tiny until one has killed him. There are many approaches to eliminating the bodyguard. One should be able to take him out with an ammo bag filled with sting bees and boom bats. Fud slugs may be a good option as well, for they do an excessive amount of damage and there are some within the area of the farm. Once Tiny has been eliminated, one can now focus upon Meagly McGraw. In the events of fighting the outlaw buses up to this point, neither Bolomites nor Stunks will work long enough to incapacitate him for a bounty. Also, the fuzzles will only damage him and lower his health, not his stamina. This only leaves one with the old Fud Slug Zap Flyer combo. To do this combo, knock him over with a Fud Slug and follow up with a charged Zap Flyer to take away his stamina. One does need a good aim though, for Meagly is fast and can be wily at times. Yeah, McGraw is extremely quick. I'd say he can near enough outrun Stranger when Stranger is sprinting on all fours. And I love this because it shows his personality even more. Meagly McGraw is a coward. He much prefers to run away from combat than engage in it, and as soon as Tiny has been destroyed, this is exactly what he does, running away frantically, panicking from the stranger. I really love the way they programmed this aspect into his boss fight, like they could have just had him fight Stranger like an ordinary outlaw once Tiny was dead, instead they made him unique and showed his personality by having him choose to run away as fast as he can from him while taking the occasional pot shot with his shotgun when he gets the chance. The wiki informs us that 
Boom bats do take away more stamina, but also more of his health. These would be used as a backup if needed. To take his stamina all the way down, one would have to use 8 to 10 fud slugs and charged zap flies to knock him out. If one runs out of fud slugs, there is a whole colony of them on the right side of the farm if needed. To capture him dead, one can use any of the lava ammo that they choose. However, it is recommended that one would use boom bats and sting bees until the outlaw boss is dead. The only thing one might be cautious of is one's health and dodging the incoming fire from McGraw. Once Meagly is taken care of, the stranger heads back to the Buzzleton Bounty store where he hands him in. If he's dead, stranger gets just 300 moolah, but receives triple that amount if he brings Meagly in alive. 900 moolah. I think Meagly, McGraw and Tiny are, for me anyway, one of the most memorable boss battles in the game. The location is incredibly unique and well designed, with a massive two floor farmhouse and outback buildings, and not to mention the opal squashing hydraulic presses and mechanisms that can factor into the gameplay. I also like the way you get to, or don't have to, visit Farmer Beak and his farmhouse before all this, and see it before it was occupied. Plus the amount of personality put into the boss bad guy here is quite impressive I think. And as a result, I think one of the most interesting boss battles in the game is when you have to take down Tiny and Meagly McGraw. Hello, follow me. Ooh, <laughs> 